Yo, yo, yo. What's good, world? Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy Gio. Back with another one, man. Got another one for y'all, man. This right here is crazy, man. And we got to definitely come together, man, because these people are really having it, man. This is a Category 5 now, man. This, this, this tornado is crazy. You know, they were saying after the first one, there was supposed to be three more, so... We're going to see about the next two, but this one right here, the second one, this one coming in hard, man. This messing a lot of people stuff up. You got some people that's evacuating, some of them that's not leaving, you know, because of their properties or their situation. And, man, this is bad, man. Like, anybody that can get out, get out. They said everybody need to leave. Everybody got to go. They, you know, they talking about six foot plus water, like, that's taller than some people, you know, some of these, these guys out here be, you know, four foot, five foot, you know, so it's like, you know, that's guys and girls, so it's like, you know, and that's kids too, so, that's crazy, man, like, that's the only thing about Florida, you know, the sinkholes, and damn, hurricanes and tornadoes. In California, you got to deal with earthquakes, man. So, like, you can't win, man. And they got water there, too. So, you know, but y'all got to check this out, man. This is live, like, live, live. The lives just going to get, man, on what's going on, man. And that thing, it look like it's going to be coming up north from there. So, it's going to be passing a lot of us, man. And, I don't need it to go no more. We don't need no more, period. But, man, this is this is something to stay on alert with. And if you're close to Florida, like Atlanta, you know, South Carolina, y'all, y'all, y'all got to y'all gotta stay on y'all P's and Q's and know what's the next move because this right here is something serious, man. And then, you know, they're talking about, you know, it's, there might be two more. You know, they, when the first one, Helen, came through, they said there was three. So the second one is coming now, other three. So well, this is this is this is crazy, man. This is terrible. Man. But drop in the comments, man. Hopefully everybody's safe, man. Um, if y'all out there in Florida, man, those areas close by, drop in the comments, man. You know we all pray for you, man. We all gonna make sure whatever everybody can do, man. Just everybody gotta come together at these type of times, man. This is serious for them and and everybody else because it ain't over yet. So ain't no telling where it's headed and. We gotta be safe as possible, man. So yeah, drop in the comments. Let's talk about this, man. I think this is something I, need. I definitely gotta do a live on. We gotta do a live on this, man, and have everybody tuned in, man, and see what we can all come together and do to make sure that everybody's taken care of, man. That's how it is when you join the family, man. When you're the family rocking, what else we rocking with you, you know? Yeah. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, man. Stay in tune, man. Run it up, run it up for your boy. I appreciate all the love and support, man. I'm going to get back with y'all, man, to the next one. I'm out. TikTok faces major lawsuits accusing the site of being bad for children. More than a dozen states and the District of Columbia sued TikTok yesterday. Congress has already moved to ban the site owned by a Chinese-based company because of security and data concerns. These 14 attorneys general claim TikTok is not only misleading the public about how safe it is, but also knowingly harming children's mental health. These lawsuits were filed yesterday in state courts after two years of investigations, and they allege that TikTok violates consumer protection laws and claim the social media app relies on addictive features that keep users on the app. Now, some of those features include notifications, that can interrupt kids' sleep patterns, and video that auto-plays to entice users to spend more and more time scrolling. TikTok's viral challenges were also cited in the lawsuits. States are claiming that those challenges promote dangerous behaviors that have caused injuries and even death. Now, in a statement, TikTok told us it's been trying to work with these attorneys general for more than two years, and the company says it provides what it calls robust safeguards and has rolled out new safety features for users under 16 that limit screen time and increase privacy. Now, as for that federal ban you already know about, it requires the company be sold or shut down by mid-January of next year, but TikTok has sued. That could drag on for years. Here in the U.S., TikTok might be gone by mid-January, uh, you may recall, unless it's sold off by ByteDance, its parent company in China, or wins a lawsuit that keeps them from having to do that. Right. Even if it survives that fight, it just got hit with many more fights, uh, lawsuits from 13 states and Washington, D.C. So if you've talked to a teenager lately, and I have, 
you know that mm, for a lot of them, their eyes are on TikTok almost all the time. In fact, one out of five say they are almost constantly on the app. And that is kind of the whole idea, according to the attorneys general who are bringing this lawsuit, this series of lawsuits. They say TikTok has purposely made its app as addictive as possible, purposely targeted children in the process, and then purposely misrepresented the safety features as more effective than they in fact are. And while every lawsuit is written a little bit differently based on different state laws, they all try to steer clear of these big First Amendment issues by focusing on features and effects, like the so-called beauty filters that may affect mental health and body image, and also viral challenges that have led to injuries or even death in some cases. Now, a TikTok spokesperson called all this inaccurate and misleading and said they strongly disagree with the arguments and they do plan to fight them. I'm Jacob Hubert, and I'm standing outside the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, where a three-judge panel has just heard arguments, in our case and others, challenging the federal ban on TikTok that's set to take effect on January 19th. The judges had challenging questions for both sides, but most importantly, our side was able to make the point that this ban would shut down the speech of some 170 million Americans who use TikTok to share and hear ideas, including political ideas. The court rightly recognized that if this only involved domestic U.S. companies, it would set off First Amendment alarm bells because the government has said that the reason it wants to shut this platform down is because it's concerned about content manipulation, meaning it's concerned about the ideas that are on the platform and the ideas that it thinks the platform might promote. But the idea that this is somehow different because TikTok is tied to a foreign company that could be subject to a foreign government's control doesn't hold up. For one thing, where national security is the argument, uh, the government has to show an immediate threat. And it hasn't even argued that there's an immediate threat here. It's all, well, someday, maybe China could use people's data for something. Maybe someday uh, China could influence the content on TikTok. That's not good enough. Uh, the motive of controlling content poisons the whole thing and makes it automatically invalid. And we're hopeful that the court will recognize that when it ultimately issues its decision. And no matter how that decision comes out, uh, whoever doesn't prevail is very likely to take this to the U.S. Supreme Court, which is likely to hear it. And we're hopeful that all that can happen so that the before January 19th, so that this ban will never take effect and people can go on speaking on TikTok. So I'm going to upload some... I'm gonna cry. So, um, that's. <laughs> Sorry. She robbed me of everything. And if I die of poor cancer, it's not happening. Jay Lulu's team has officially hired bots. Because my main account is banned, where all of my Diddy blend him. Is Jennifer Lopez responsible for Kyle Marissa Roth passing away? Because a lot of people are alleging that it's her fault. Now, if you guys remember, a few weeks ago, Kyle's account got banned, and there was a lot of speculation on why that happened. But according to this Forbes article, Jennifer Lopez was the reason why Kyle Marissa Ross' account got banned. When I was in her live stream the other day, she was actually talking about the fact that this time when her account got banned, it was a lot different because usually they'll let you retrieve your stuff and save your work and get your contacts, um, and that she had so many messages and some important information in the messages from sources on this account, and that this time it was weird because they didn't let her retrieve any of that information. It was just all gone. Fans are still reeling after the tragic news broke on April 15th, 2024 about the passing of Kyle Marissa Roth, the beloved TikToker and celebrity gossip creator famous for her signature catchphrase, you want more, I'll give you more. Although the cause of her death remains shrouded in mystery, fans have taken to social media to speculate on a theory involving JLo potentially playing a role in her demise. It's true that Kyle frequently dished out gossip tidbits about JLo, especially over the last few months since JLo's relationship with Diddy has become a hot topic. Kyle Marissa also recently publicly revealed that her income took a hit when JLo shut down her content. In fact, Kyle openly accused JLo's narcissism as being the driving force behind the downfall of her small business, claiming she was even unable to download or save content because of it. It's been reported that Kyle was facing a battle with colon cancer around the time her TikTok page got shut down, and the ban reportedly came
claim after she used copyrighted footage in a video where she critiqued JLo. Unfortunately, this setback left her without the means to cover the costs of her treatment. So could it be that JLo's actions really contributed to the tragic passing of Kyle Marissa Roth? And what exactly did Kyle Marissa spill about JLo and Diddy before she died? Let's break it down. Her sister said they don't know what happened yet and that it happened last week. Um, her mom said that they will understand more in the next few days. It seems like her family does want to keep everybody in the loop about that and that there will be more information to come. I just think it's so weird. It's been a week and they're saying they don't know what happened and she's been having all these problems and I'm not trying to create any speculation, but I do want it to be known that she was having these issues with and other creators are having these issues with their accounts as well. So Miss Jennifer Lopez really can't catch a break from the drama. JLo has been going above and beyond to convince us all that she's just this crazy girl from the Bronx who made it in Hollywood through hard work alone. But you know, everybody's true colors are always gonna show after a while. I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. A crazy little girl who used to be wild and no limits, all dreams and shit. J-Lo is a delusional chaos demon. At this point, I don't even believe she's from New York anymore because what block are you from, J-Lo? <laughs> Leave us alone, please. Just a few weeks back, JLo was pulled into this whole mess surrounding her ex-boyfriend Diddy, and the woman who was in the face during that infamous club back in 1999 came forward claiming that Diddy shot her using a gun that JLo supposedly snuck into the club. Watch out, and when I turn back, I literally, I know, and I've said over and over, I've heard the voices up, that you are about to be there. Calm down. And as I said, no, I looked straight forward ahead and I watched the muzzle flash from both of their guns and I felt the impact to my face instantly. JLo testified at the grand jury, as did many other people. It needs to be reopened because if that is in fact the case, she carried one in and she lied to the grand jury. And as if that wasn't enough, now the internet is saying that JLo is somehow connected to the death of social media influencer Kyle Marissa Roth, who became famous on TikTok for sharing celebrity gossip content and blind items. The TikTok community is buzzing with talk about Kylie's recent passing at the age of 36, and there's a lot of focus on an interview she did with Forbes just before she died. In that interview, Kyle revealed that her social media account was banned because of copyright issues related to JLo's latest cinematic flop, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, a bizarre documentary about her upbringing in the Bronx and her rise to fame. And listen, Kyle Marissa did not hold back in that Forbes interview. She claimed that JLo's actions were solely responsible for crushing her small business. And she even mentioned how she couldn't save or download content that had racked up billions of views and over 50 million likes. JLo's narcissism single-handedly crushed the main portion of my small business, Kyle Marissa said. Despite creating a new account, Kyle stated she lost thousands of followers and claimed that JLo single-handedly cost her more than four figures of income just for March 2024. She also explained that the loss of income severely impacted her ability to access necessary medical care for her colon cancer. And by the way, Kyle Marissa wasn't the only one who complained to Forbes about JLo going on this unhinged copyright war against TikTokers, simply because they called her out on lying about running up and down the streets of the Bronx. TikTok creator Quince Roper Servant told Forbes that he received a copyright strike in response to a critical review of JLo's movie, and his video had millions of views before it was flagged. But according to Quince, the video was fair commentary, quote, intended to satirize the overwhelming narcissism I was witnessing, end quote. We should be able to share our views about content we're constantly exposed to without being penalized, he said. It's time to question the celebrities being pushed on us and advocate for a culture that values open dialogue. But then this whole story took a tragic turn when news broke that Kyle Marissa Roth had passed away. In the last couple of weeks, Kyle had been very open speaking online about the issues that she was having with her account for speaking about certain celebrities. She had done interviews where she said stuff like this. A problem, and that is that uh, JLo copyright claimed all of us, myself included, got my account banned. I think that was it because she didn't like the fact that we were using clips from her her narcissistic venture, her, her cosplay of an Eras tour film, I don't know what the f that is, um, to uh, point out all of the lies and narcissistic attributes um, that, you know, she has. So a lot of your favorite creators might be gone because of that. She had lost her main account and she had started a new account where she was over 160,000 followers. I was just watching her on live the other day talk about this and it's incredibly devastating news to hear that she is gone. We don't know this. Oh, <laughs>